and we're officially live broadcasting only on onedillaway.com slash live this is money matters my name is nev and today we're going to be talking well we're going to be talking a bit of crypto and what's happening in that neck of the woods why well because it's important and because we actually have some really really important news like for example did you know that uh, bitcoin has actually you know jumped up nicely over the last 24 hours like when i say nicely i mean like nicely we're over 11,000 as of this moment of course that is going to change that is going to change momentarily i'm sure of it but that's where we are so that's a very exciting thing and uh, people are crediting that there is a potential reason as to why that is happening so if you're curious to find out what that reason might be well today's episode is absolutely for you we're also going to be discussing of a very important document that was released by the, the Department of Justice uh, that is basically given some sort of like a regulatory guidelines so to speak as to the cryptocurrencies and kind of how they see it you know uh, of the benefits and the risks and of course of what their proposal basically is talking about so we're going to be discussing that very briefly and of course if you are curious about uh, yearn.finance and uh, notice that they have gone from like the high of 42,000 something dollars down to like 12,000 something which is a huge drop you will be happy to know that they are starting to turn it all around and it seems like it's going back on up and we're going to be discussing as to why the change of the hearts one way or the other could be happening as you can see there's a lot of very very important stuff that we're going to be talking about and uh, that is what today's show is going to be all about I do want to welcome everybody watching this live on onedillaway.com slash live. Feel free to sign in, say hello, and as always, we're going to be doing a Q&A at the end of the show. If you're watching this elsewhere, do me a huge favor. A, consider coming and joining us live so that way we can hang out and ask questions because that's my favorite part. And that's the part that we don't actually record, so it could be very, very, very private. Then if you are like mm, yeah i would but you always do it at 7 a.m and that's just too early for me especially based off of where i live that's fine stay where you are keep on watching it but in order to get notified about watching it you need to subscribe and hit the bell button you get all of the notifications that you need that way you get all of the videos coming your way so that way you can keep following the content if that is something that you actually want and of course if you can and it's not too much of a trouble to hit a like button do me a huge favor and do that right now let's do this Happy Friday. Is it Friday? It is Friday. It's October 9th. It's Friday. So technically speaking, I'm supposed to be off today. Like I actually took off this whole weekend. I was going to be off this Friday and Monday and Tuesday. And I was going to make this like super amazing five day vacation. It wasn't even going to be staycation because I wasn't going to stay. I was going to go. Uh, obviously not internationally because <laughs> we still can't do that. But I was going to go. I was going to go and do stuff. However, however, there are certain things that have imploded in the uh, job side of the things. As you may know, I do have businesses. I have a job. I have all these different things. And uh, one of the things that recently somebody has said is like, wait a minute. You know, you have all of this, all of this, like, you know, you're talking about investing and all of this stuff. And, you know, uh, uh, why do you still have a job and everything else? And... Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, it gives me a social outlet because uh, being an entrepreneur, it can be a very lonely game at times, um, especially nowadays when you're like working from home, 99.9% .9 of the time, it can be very, very lonely. So this gives me a social outlet because I am no different in that arena than the rest of my peers. We're all on the same level 
and so that weirdness of like you know you're my boss kind of thing goes away for the most part not always but for the most part right obviously you know if you supervise people then that whole you're my boss and does keep it but there's a big difference of like you just have a managerial position as a boss um, in the relationship then holy Kripoli, you own this thing um, it's a very very different relationship that develops so that's one uh, the other one is it helps a great deal when it comes to investing in real estate uh, the lenders and the bankers tend to be way more friendly towards the investors who say yeah I do have a job and they also tend to be way more friendly to investors who say yeah I do have college degree and post college degree and stuff and so the more degrees of schooling you have the more they actually like you and less questions they ask so those are all of the good reasons to do it and on top of that I do actually enjoy what I'm doing most of the time not 100% I won't lie not 100% and uh, this is one of those not 100% things that's like so weird that is happening that is causing everybody to stay around and having to work and it has a lot to do with uh, with the local government and the requirement from the health officials so there goes that there goes that so we're all going to be working this weekend which is kind of sucky i guess um but the good news is i like the people uh, i like what i do so it's not as sucky although although being able to keep my original plans would have been lovely but that's okay we're just gonna push it to another weekend and uh, you know it's all good it's all good I'm still gonna get my five days off of like oh it's just not gonna be right now which is excellent news for you because means that I am here doing this live and I'm gonna be continuing to do it the entire weekend so we're gonna have a show today and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday so and of course continuing on but if I was to go away uh, there probably would be no show because I would you know when I go away I go away don't I so anyways um, let's go in let's go in and let's talk about what is going on in the market enough of me chatting that's not what you came for you came for this so let's give you this all right so we're gonna take a look at what's going on with the top 100 coins by market capitalization so as you can see Bitcoin is up uh, over 4% in 24 hours that is absolutely amazing of a move in 24 hour period at well over 11 well it is definitely over eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand thirty one dollars and 14 cents thank you very much and just yesterday just yesterday you could have gone in and bought this puppy at uh, 10,500 something 10,600 maybe um, so it as you can see it definitely it was holding up really well it was a bit on the sleeper end of things but overall when you take a look at it it's uh, it's doing really well it's doing really well so uh, congrats if you have made some money ETH has done even better in a 24-hour period going up six percent and uh, currently is three hundred fifty eight dollars and thirty four cents and then as we scroll down you will see a whole sea of green like I mean green 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 remember there were days when it's like red 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 well today is green 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 and uh, let's see who pumped the most holy macro look at this oh Wi-Fi 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 is up 40 1.4 percent they also did take a huge dump over the last uh, couple of weeks um, they are now trading at eighteen thousand six hundred seventeen dollars and 99 cents uma uma is up 27 percent 27.6 percent sorry uh, currently trading at seven dollars fifty seven uh, cents uh, rune rune rooney depends on how you say it 27.1 percent um, Uniswap, uh, UNI, Uni, up 26.5 percent. KSM 21.5. AVAX uh, or AVAX uh, 21.2. Band up 20.3 percent. SXP 20 percent. Sol, SOL um, up uh, 19.5. Link up 17.9. As you can see, a whole 
bunch of projects and products are up and up in a big, big, big way. And uh, let's see if there's any big old dumpster stuff. And there is zero, zero green. I mean, sorry, zero red, not green. Zero red in a 24 hour period. I have never, ever seen this like ever that everything is green. This is probably the most positive crypto day that we are reporting. I don't think I've ever reported of a completely green day. There's zero negative. Now, of course, some are like point, uh, point one percent, point two percent, which is super small, but it's not negative. Everything, literally everything, including the stable coins are on the positive end of things. If we do get look at a one hour, we do have link pumped uh, 7% in just one hour. Uh, Wi-Fi pumped 6.7 uh, 7 in one hour. Nest is up. Uni, SNX, AVAX, Quant, Ocean, and OMG. Those are the top ones that are pumping the last hour. And we do have two red ones. I was going to say green again. Two red ones, a whole two in one hour, and it's 80 USD. It's a stable coin that is down 0.1%, uh, trading at dollar and one cent, which should be a dollar anyway, so that I'm not even going to count it. And Luna is down at 0.0%, which is basically not down. It just didn't move. So that doesn't count. So still, even in a 24 hour period, we have absolutely zero red absolutely zero red this is probably the most amazing most bullish crypto day ever 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 which means that if you are in crypto regardless of what you hold you have potentially made money but uh, well maybe it just depends when you bought so potentially depends when you bought if you bought in the slump over the last few weeks you are likely up congrats you are making money super super excited for you now we did talk about the urine finance and the sort of like being down being up what's going on so let's go in and take a little bit of information and the news in the latest report about what's happening with that particular coin all right so you're not finance yfi why fee why i don't know say say it with me let me get some coffee mm, yes okay recently reached lows of $12,300 after a consistent decline for the past few weeks. And of course, when that was happening, the Ethereum started to perform better. We talked about it um, earlier uh, this week on the show. YFI is currently trading at $16,032, uh, which is actually incorrect. YFI, YFI, where's my YFI? Here it is. YFI is currently trading at $18,000. $617.99. Uh, so which means this was yesterday, right? When they were doing the report. So it was trading from up from yesterday's uh, low by 24%. And today we can see that it's actually up 41.4%. Huge, 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 huge gains for Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi has always been seen as DeFi sector benchmark. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to pause there for a second because... <coughs> Excuse me. While I do appreciate, while I do appreciate that I'm saying that it's always been a match mark, you can't say that because DeFi existed before that. This is just another way to do it. And it's not always. It's been out on the market for like a few months. So let's be realistic. Let's be realistic and let's bring down the craziness over here to say it. So I do, I'm going to call out BS on this one right over here that says it's always been seen as the DeFi sector benchmark. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. You can't say that. DeFi has existed a little bit longer than YFI, A, and B, it's not like that they have had like a 6,000 year history. So it's like, it's always been there. It's not. So let's tone it down. Tone it down. Who wrote this? Oh, Sarah Tran. Sarah Tran. Hey, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, like, give me a break, man. Like, always been. Let's let's call it what it is, man. Let's call it what it is, okay? Anyways, uh, Wi-Fi price was driven down in the past few weeks due to the urine dot finance Andre Kronje, or Kronje, Kronje, is that how you say it? 
side project, Eminence Finance Bug, as well as the fact that Y Vaults were presenting less returns than it previously period. YFI investors have stepped back in the market as fintech company Square recently revealed its purchase of 50 million in Bitcoin and we are going to cover that in just a moment so stay tuned this is the big news of the day and why people believe that everything is going up there's one man that everyone should thank potentially allegedly I don't know let's find out all right so um, the rally in the past 24 hours also attributed to a large borrower or YFI who closed a very large short position on the token. Now, a crypto whale has borrowed um, 80 to 100 million dollars worth of YFI through money market protocol Aave. And uh, they basically, they were worried, investors were worried that the reason behind lending the huge amount is that it was going to use to short the, the coin itself, the YFI. And uh, now that the, uh, that the position has been closed and stuff, uh, folks are feeling more relieved and uh, that's the believed reason why everybody is jumping into the rally. And of course, as more people jump into it, then it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy as we know, right? As the price pumps, people get more excited. As more people get more excited, more people get into the market. As more people get into the market, the price continues to go on up. And of course, we keep on going up until something happens. Somebody gets spooked. Something gets stopped. Somebody asks a question and says, hey, this might be a bubble. And then everybody starts getting out. Then as people start getting out, the price starts going down. As the price goes down, more people want to get out. There's more people going to get out. Well, the price keeps on going down even more. Again, another self-fulfilling prophecy. So now we are self-fulfilling a prophecy on the way up. That is an important piece that you should keep in mind because people are excited about what's happening in the market. And why shouldn't they? Look, if you were to go in and all of a sudden in a 24 hour period, your returns were 42%, would you be excited or would you be upset? I think you'd probably be very, very, very extremely excited, extremely excited and hoping more people get into it and get excited with you. And you know what? They very well could. So hold on to your chairs because it could go up, but we are not out of the waters yet because it could also always continue to go back down. We have been playing a very, very weird yo-yo over the months of September and October, and a lot of it has to do with A, stonks are uncertain because politics is uncertain. Politics is uncertain because, well, there's a thing called election happening in 2020, right? So not only do we have all other problems to deal with, and now we have the two individuals, you know, two grandpas basically fighting, fighting for the throne, fighting for the throne. And let's see who is going to win. Let's see who is going to be the winner to the beautiful white throne that they all want. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. But, 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 but. We did talk about the importance of the news of Square 50 million in Bitcoin. And, and there is news that this is the reason why everything has turned around. So we all potentially have one man to thank, and that is Jack Dorsey. So, hey, when you see him, give him a big old hug and a kiss. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can't do that. Not in 2020. I guess just wave behind the mask from afar. All right, so here we go. Square's $50 million in Bitcoin is better for crypto than MicroStrategy's $425 million BTC investment. Interesting. Mm. So you likely have heard that Square, Jack Dorsey's fintech, sorry about my, my gosh, stupid allergies. Mm. All right, <laughs> I told them, I told them, right? Uh, they're going to go away now for sure. I scared them off. I scared them off. Square's Jack Dorsey's fintech payment company just announced today that he purchased $50 million worth of Bitcoin, which now makes up 1% of the firm's reserve asset. 
While smaller than MicroStrategy's BTC investment, the implic uh, implications for the crypto markets are predicted to be far greater. And they already seem to be. They already seem to be because it sounded like once this was announced, it started to pump. I don't know that. If you do have better information about it, please let me know. Hit me up. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. I am curious and I do read and respond and I thank you in advance. Following the announcement by Square, seven notable experts have come forward to discuss what the move could mean for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry. <laughs> so, one of the individuals said that uh, Square's investment is more impactful um, than the, the micro strategy just because uh, Square and Mark uh, uh, Dorsey are much more well known, specifically in the tech sector, right? So that makes sense. Then there was a Forbes reporter that also was saying that, hey, this is very important. As Bitcoin holds value for different reasons to different people, institutional adoption can make take many forms. Given Jack Dorsey's prominence, Square's Bitcoin acquisition will bring additional attention to the notion of Bitcoin as corporate hedge to USD inflation. There was another individual said, Director of Institutional Research Trade Block, Josh Todaro said, Unlike institutional investment adoption from fund standpoint, which we have seen in the past, we are now seeing institutional adoption from corporation standpoint and uh, in which Bitcoin is being treated less as a speculative investment and more as an inflation resistant reserve asset on corporate balance sheets. And of course, that is what MicroStrategy is using it for. It's using it actually as a uh, let me see if we can improve the lighting here. Yes, we can just slightly. Um, so not only are they using it as the hedge, but it's also going to be used, Square had said, they're going to use it as an intangible asset, right? So that way, uh, you know, they're going to hold it on their books and it's going to basically sit on the uh, balance sheet of the corporation, which is very, very important concept um, and uh, very, very cool. Economist Stephen Roach believes that the U.S. dollar is set to crash and that a double dip recession odds are above 50 percent. Bitcoin, of course, as you know, has been benefiting every time the dollar goes down. Bitcoin tends to go up. Not um, it's not 100 percent negative uh, correlation. Right. Uh, but it is pretty darn close. And so it is one of those things that when we see stronger weakening of the dollar, Bitcoin tends to go up. Right now, the dollar hasn't been, I mean, it has weakened, but it has been on the move on up. So you want to pay attention to that component and don't put all of your eggs into one basket because every basket is a bit shaky these days and quite uncertain given everything that is happening, not just here in US, but around the world. So Stephen Roach, who is also former chairman of Morgan Stanley Asia, previously predicted back in June 2020 that the U.S. dollar could crash by 35 percent against foreign currencies. He could see the U.S. dollar crash happening by the end of 2021. Now, back in June, we were actually going down on a downward spiral. And I'm afraid uh, that Mr. Roach has not been completely accurate because the dollar has reached the bottom and started to actually climb on back up. So it's not going down um, in the continuous matter because here's the interesting piece, y'all. Here's the interesting piece. We tend to have this belief that when something pumps, right, when something is going up like crazy, that it's going to go up for forever. When something dumps, we're going to think, oh my gosh, it's going to go all the way through the earth to China. Right? Uh, especially if you're here in the United States. That's what we always say, right? When you start digging, like stop digging, you're going to reach China. Um, so we believe that when things go up, they're going to go up to the moon, right? And when they go down, they're going to go down to, you know, uh, center of the universe and if not even further down. So I think that folks just need to understand that that's not kind of how it works. And I see that even within myself. Like I will see something going down I'm like, oh man. And then I'm like, intelligent goes, you got to buy it now. And the heart goes, uh-uh. And then, you know, you have the, it's kind of like having the two little guys on your shoulders, right? And the intelligent goes, no, 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 no. I need you to buy it right now. And the emotional side is like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing it. Uh, no, 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 Nev. I need you to press the buy button now. So eventually, after the fight and stuff, I do it. And then same thing happens when things pump up, right? It will hit on up and right. And I see it. And I'm like, 
So the intelligent side of me again goes, time to sell. No, 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 no. Look, 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 look. It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. It's going to go to continue going up. And the intelligent side goes, no, Nev, I need you to sell right now. No, 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 look, 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 please, 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 just, just 10% more, just 10% more, just a dollar more, right? And so it's always this funny game that I play in my own head, and I don't know if you do the same thing. Maybe you can sympathize with it. Maybe you can. Maybe you're like, this guy is nuts. I don't know what he battles, but I don't have that problem. And if you don't, Please hit me up. Let me know. Let me know what you're drinking. Let me know what you're smoking. Let me know what you're eating. Maybe you have a special meditation or a run or an exercise that you do that you're able to do it. Because for me, I do know that it's a battle all the time between the intelligent side and the emotional side. And so I always have to battle it uh, back and forth constantly on everything. And, uh, you know, just hope that the intelligent win. Um, more so than the um, than the hope side, than the emotional side of things. So, and if you're exactly like me, hey, hit me up. Let me know as well because I do want to hear it because, you know, it's always interesting to me. Like, am I the only one struggling with this stuff? Or like, are you guys right there with me? It's, uh, you know, it helps me understand. Am I the crazy one in this story or am I the normal one? And everybody is doing the same thing. All right, here we go. And one of the interesting things that I wanted to cover is the Department of Justice has released a for immediate release. And they released it actually yesterday. So, of course, we're covering this morning that uh, uh, there is a publication of cryptocurrency enforcement framework. So it's a publication that is produced by the attorney general of a, a cyber digital task force over of emerging threats and enforcement challenges associated with increasing prevalence of use of cryptocurrency. So it's divided in like three parts and uh, they are basically saying, you know, we have the three parts of the whole thing and part one and I'll come back to the previous one uh, because I, you know, I, I, I have some challenges with that one. I won't lie. Um, detailed threat, uh, um, you know, they're basically saying that there are detailed threat about the whole thing, how the cryptocurrency can be used, you know, illicitly or, you know, criminally and financial transactions being one of those, uh, money laundering being another one. And then, of course, uh, uh, simple crimes, right? Just like theft um, or that kind of stuff, right? Then part two is exploring the various legal and regulatory tools that they might have to assist, again, sorry, allergies are just awful. Um, uh, there are var various uh, legal and regulatory tools that, uh, that the Department of Justice has in their pocket to assist with their stuff. And then we have part three, which is uh, with discussion of the ongoing challenges the government faces in cryptocurrency enforcement, particularly with respect to business model, right? And so they are like, OK, how how are the certain uh, cryptocurrency exchanges? What are they using? What platforms, you know, uh, and so on. And then, of course, they're looking at activities such as like mixing and tumbling, chain chopping and different ways to sort of obscure the tracking for the um, for the agencies. And they have a full report which you can download from their website. And um, I will be very honest, it's 83 pages. I haven't read it. It is going to be my midnight reading, as they say. So I'm going to be reading all of this stuff. And you will see, you can see right here that they basically have the threat overview, right? So they look at it and say, well, okay, what are the legitimate uses, the illicit uses, and the role of the dark markets, right? Then what are the laws and regulations? And, uh, you know, what are some of the things that exist out there? And uh, what are the ongoing challenges um, that are happening? So it is going to be a very, very interesting read. I am certain of it. I am excited to read the whole thing. And I will be sure to report to you tomorrow. So if you don't feel like reading 83 pages of regulations, well, I'll read it to you and I will read it to you tomorrow. So make sure you come and join me. And in order to do that, of course, you have to A, show up to the channel live so we can chat, or B, make sure you subscribe 
to the YouTube channel hit the bell notification you get notified when the new video goes up so you don't miss because there's some juicy details inside that publication that I was able to briefly just kind of like skim through uh, that I'm not gonna go through today because I don't want to share fake news so to speak so I want to be able to read the whole thing understand it and then report on it to you so I want to read it first okay so make sure you come tomorrow and hey since we're talking about tomorrow and doing all of this stuff and you're thinking of like where do I sign up where do I click everything smash the like button too you're already there you might as well do it it doesn't cost you anything right it's free that's one thing that is free right out there is the like button okay <coughs> excuse me so here is one thing that I did uh, was slightly critical when I was reading this stuff. I can't help myself. Okay, so, quote, when they were like talking about releasing the form and so on and, you know, talking about the whole thing, they said, quote, the United States has been enormously successful blocking terrorist road uh, regimes and their supporters from funding their activity using traditional currencies. And, well, sort of. I mean, I, I think that they have done fairly well. I won't lie, right? Because I don't know how much worse would it be if they were not doing some of the stuff, right? However, however, we also have recently uncovered a report from FinCEN, right? That basically said that we had all of these giant banks that are funding things left, right, and center that are falling under the terrorist the rogue regimes and the supporters and they are funding activities using traditional currencies can we say jp morgan chase deutsche bank uh you know like what were what were the rest of them can you remember because i can't i just remember that those two um i think it was like uh ubs maybe right uh, so anyways uh th th this is you know when they say that they're like enormously successful that's bs that is absolute BS because people are still using dollars, dollars. Uh, may I say that? May I say that it is predominantly dollars that are being used for illegal arms, drugs, human trafficking, uh, you know, the, 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 the bombs and the destructions and uh, uh, all kinds of terrorist uh, activities. And, and may I add, may I add that also... U.S. has, uh, or the U.S. dollar, and, you know, by, by extension, I guess, U.S., has funded, technically speaking, the whole 9-11. Remember the towers and the planes and all of that stuff? It was, you know, it sounds like it has already been proven that we know who's been done, and that post finding that out, the U.S. government has also continued to fund the same group of people. So don't tell me that we have been enormous successful in blocking all of this stuff no 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 we just choose what terrorists we want to support and fund and which ones yeah we don't really like the ones that we don't like we become very aggressive towards it the ones that we don't care about or we could see some benefit from uh, well we continue to fund them and we don't care whom it hurts and of course we're going to, you know, put it under the rug or sweep it under the rug, you know, bury it under the ground, you know, plant the tree on top of it and move on. Play pretend nothing happened. So don't tell me that traditional finance does not continue to fund stuff because we have had huge, tremendous, enormous problems with the sovereign and fiat currencies, whichever term you want to use, of course, Gold and silver probably have been used. Of course, some of the financial um, engineering has also been used to fund this stuff. And our traditional banks, who still exist and still get bonuses, get bailed out, and sometimes they get fined, sometimes they really don't, have been financing the entire thing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's not just point fingers on the cryptocurrencies for this stuff. And might i add that uh, tracking dollars especially when they're printed fake or otherwise way harder than tracking of the cryptocurrency way harder now i do agree that there are certain things like mixers and that kind of stuff that you know choppers or whatever they're called 
that you know like i don't know that i'm crazy about it and stuff right but cryptocurrencies as a whole are much easier to track of who's going where and who did what than it would be if somebody just took um you know as they say unmarked bills in tens and twenties um and use them around the world you'd never find them you'd never catch them good luck never gonna happen never gonna happen and even now it seems like never gonna happen even when they use banks even when they use banks it's still not happening because they transfer the money 10 times over then pull it into the cash and just disappear into this world i don't know how but they disappear they disappear completely 100 percent. so let's be very honest let's be very honest and i'm calling bs on the blue part of the uh, of the highlight right over here of the of the statement from the Department of Justice. Now, of course, they're saying that they will adapt the strategy and tools to the 21st century financing, which is cool, and I do support it. Cryptocurrencies and distributed ledger technology present tremendous promise for the future, but it is critical that these important innovations follow the law. I do agree. I do agree that cryptocurrencies and distributed ledger technology do present tremendous promise for the future of what we can do and what we're capable to do. I do also agree that we should be following the law. The challenge is we still, we still don't have very clear regulation as to what following the law means. You can't just make it up and make it retroactive and then say shame on you for not knowing what was in my head 10 years from now nobody knows that right so i think it is time that the entrepreneurs the financiers the government everybody gets into the same room and actually works together to come up with what regulations are so that we can have a standard by which everybody plays and not just have it like as somebody makes it up we go right i think it's important that finally we stop individually working on this stuff and come up as a group and agree this goes this doesn't this stand this doesn't we should do this we should not do this i don't know that's just my take on the whole thing you let me know how you feel about the whole thing and i do appreciate you watching so smash the like button right now before you go do subscribe because we're going to be going deep 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 into the announcement of what's happening of course we're going to look at some other news as well and until tomorrow, stay forever money blessed. And do remember, you are only one deal away.